Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here for our November regular monthly meeting. And one thing I'd like to point out for those of you that don't know it, tomorrow at 11, there will be a Veterans uh, Day ceremony in the park at the gazebo. So please, you can come out. It's supposed to be a gorgeous day. And come sh honor those veterans, <coughs> Mr. Yant here tomorrow, and other veterans who may be here. First order of business will be the approval of the minutes for the October 13th regular council meeting. Make a motion to be approved. Second. Discussion? None. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed vote no. Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. At this time, we'll call on Kip Turner for a highway update. Well, it's good to be back. I literally walked off the project, so I haven't prepared anything. But I did change my boots, so I won't track <laughs> asphalt on your carpet. <laughs> Um, probably the, the major things going on right now in town, um, the wall construction is one of the biggest um, across from the food line, the antique store area, as well as at the Holiday Inn. If you've been down in the Holiday Inn area lately, they've started the, the final facing of that wall, which is, is those panels, and uh, they're coming up quickly already. So really, really hope that uh, within a couple of weeks, um, you know, that wall's going to going to have its final shape and um, weather holds by the end of November really hoping that uh, the walls up here at food line and or across from food line and the antique store will, will uh, be co close to completion also and of course uh, a lot of asphalt work going on they're still out there working now and um, because of the weather this morning it got a late start so so they'll be out there fairly late uh, with the asphalt we spent a lot of time at uh, Ransom Street today um, getting a lot of the the asphalt brought up to grade there in the intersection. And uh, while I'm on that topic, and I believe Ray might have asked me one time about just closing some of these side streets, but so far, like just uh, with Ransom Street and probably Church Street, um, we're, we've been able to do a lot of that work without closing those and putting on offsite detours. And I really think even at Sunset Drive, we're going to be able to do a lot of that work also because when we're doing that with asphalt, you know, we don't have to complete it all in one day. We've got it tied in where traffic can run fine on at the end of the day and we crank it up again the next day. So I'm hoping that really those impacts that we were a little concerned about early on on closing some of these side streets down have kind of, you know, we're kind of working those out with our daily schedules. And it's not to say there still may need to be uh, some side street closures for some, some certain things, but uh, I definitely do not see that as long as what the plans originally called us to do. So, so that's a positive thing. Um, also, we've resumed pour, pouring curb and gutter um, up across from Subway on the side of the Blown Rock Furniture Store. Uh, they poured curb and gutter on that outside at the end of last week. They'll be pouring some more up there tomorrow. Um, as well as from Sunset Drive to Church Street, um, hopefully by the end of the night tonight, most of those base layers of asphalt will be completed and that'll set us up to really start working on the curb and gutter through that section as well as those driveway aprons into some of the businesses. We did spend, uh, I believe it was Sunday, quite a bit of time getting some of those drives tied in while the bank was closed and Papa Joe's closes early on Sunday and the ABC store, so it was a good day to get driveways tied in without impacting um, the businesses. So. We realize we're still an inconvenience to the businesses when, and we can't just totally um, <coughs> stay out of their way all the time but we, we do try to be mindful of that and work with that when we can but uh, we appreciate their their patience and so far everybody's really been nice and understanding what we're what we're trying to do there before winter really does catch us um, one other point that I will mention um, and I don't have the details ironed out yet but the DOT has asked us to price a couple of options and they were okay with me mentioning this tonight um, for the rock face below the Cliff Dwellers um, motel where we had done some of that remedy work. It's probably been, what, a year and a half to even two years ago where they sprayed the concrete on the face. They're now looking at some options where we could come back and try to blend that in to the natural uh, rock that's around that. So um, there are a couple of options that's been sent in to them, and they're seriously considering that. And I'm sure there will be some more details um, come about as that gets finalized. So. I know that's been a point of interest in the past, too, so I wanted to mention that tonight. I'm sure there's some other things, but uh, I'll just open it up to you guys. If you've got any questions or anything I need to go back to DOT with. or How late do you think you'll be able to, uh, I know it's 
open-ended question. Chip, the paving, continue to be paving. Uh, is there a certain temperature that's going to put yeah, an end to all of that? There, there is. Um, you know, last year it got really cold the first of November, mm -hmm. then it warmed back up, and we were paving out here until mid to late January. Um, it's really hard to say. It also has to do with the different type of mixes you're putting down. Mm -hmm. We're putting down a base mix right now. We're good. As long as we know the temperature is going to rise some during the day, we'll, we'll start placing that even at 32 and 33 degrees. So, um, you know, this time of year, you know, we, we still feel pretty good about November and December, and if we get fortunate, we'll get into into January also. But, um, yeah. Any other questions? Dan? Yeah, a couple of things that I've mentioned has been safety ones. As I was driving over tonight, thank you all for working late, by the way. But a couple of guys walked out over into the drive lanes, and they didn't have vests on. Hmm. So I couldn't even see them, and it was dark, and the lights weren't shining down on them. So if you'd mention to them. I will. Most, um, and most of my guys have had vests on today. So unless when it's got cold, somebody's thrown a jacket on over a vest, I could see that happening. But thanks for pointing that out because that is a – uh, important concern of ours too. Thanks. Anything else? Uh, Doug? Are you, have you got the driveway accesses tapered about where they're going to be? No, they're going to, we've got them in there enough to, I'm, I'm trying to get along 321 most of it in so I can go ahead and get the concrete portion of the drives poured. But a number of those, even though we've backed a pretty good ways on the driveways, some of them are still going to come back further. Some of them are going to be softened a little more still. They will. And, and I have asked DOT on a regular basis, and they have been coming out and reviewing those and giving us guidance on the how far they want us to continue to go back. There's a, a range in the DOT standard about the steepness. Um, so there's some leeway there to work with, and DOT's been giving us some guidance. But, yes, yeah, several of those um, will definitely be going back on even more before the final asphalt's placed. Other questions? Anything, yeah. anything else for Kip? Thank you, Kip. All right. Thank Good you luck all. to you. Okay, Streetscape Capital Design Considerations for Main Street. Mr. Chapman. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Um, we're excited to Starting at 221 uh, on the west side of the street, we'll start it in front of Mellow Mushroom, and that curb and sidewalk there that has been placed will stay in place as it is. And then as we continue down past where Mellow Mushroom is, we will uh, start the pavers and do new sidewalk and new curb and gutter all along uh, that area. that section. Uh, I'll t tell you a little bit, if you look at this diagram, the outline trees are existing trees. The trees that are colored in, as you see across the road, and I'll cover the other side in a moment, but those are new trees, just to give you orientation. And you can see some difference, and you'll see this farther down the way, but if you'll see here, there's a section of sidewalk that we're going to keep, and there's sections of sidewalk that we're going to replace, and then I'll try to differentiate the areas where work's already done, like in front of Town Hall, uh, so you can see that the difference in colors. Uh, essentially, the project is taking uh, curb and gutter sidewalk pavers throughout the remainder of, of Main
Main Street. And on these plans, we have left all the parking spaces as they are because we're not changing any of the curb lines essentially. <clears throat> so we've left the parking spaces as they currently exist. Now this plan hasn't been reviewed by DOT in detail. Uh, way back in 2007, when we had the overall concept was first conceived, uh, DOT looked at the plans, but they said at that time they would approve them uh, piece by piece as we build them. Uh, so we will send these plans to DOT after we get the construction drawings complete. <coughs> But what we wanted to do is to review the overall layout with town council before we went and finished the design and submitted that to DOT. So it would be clear to, to everyone what we're doing uh, in detail. We're uh, going back to the east side at 221. All of our work is stopping there on the <coughs> south side of that stoplight. We talked extensively about the north side of the stoplight on the speckled trout side. But that work will be covered when the sidewalk project to Bass Lake moves forward. You know, assuming that that project moves forward as one big project, then that area will be covered at that time. Uh, it it's not part of this work. <coughs> On the east side, we're essentially starting at the edge of uh, the parking lot where the crosswalk or the sidewalk, however you want to look at it, is striped across uh, that parking area in front of uh, Puss Lawn. south with uh, sidewalk pavers uh, and cur new curb and gutter. We have a crosswalk at that intersection at this point. And then we go along. We're going to keep the existing driveway on one side uh, that goes into the post office. Uh, we will keep proceeding down that area. We're adding three trees uh, in front of Gossip Park, evenly spaced across that area. <coughs> and then as we get down in front of the bank and then properties in the rug company will keep the same paper width but the uh, sidewalk will work to the buildings and that essentially happens through a lot of this section of the project particularly on the east side and that will carry us back to Maple Street and the corners will keep the same look that they have now where you have a, a paper section <coughs> on those corners and then we'll have a new uh, stamped crosswalk at Maple Street connecting to the uh, handicap ramps that are uh, on the corner at Maple and Main Street. As we go on along, I'll go back to the uh, west side because this will finish out the west side. The area in front of the library and town hall has been completed. Uh, when we did the very first phase, uh, we did pavers in the gap between the sidewalk and the old curb in front of the park. We're going back now and we're replacing all the curb and gutter in that area because it's really not a curb and gutter, there's just a small curb. And those pa any pavers that'll be disturbed will be put back, but we'll have new curb and gutter there, but that sidewalk will, will remain as it is. Uh, and the landscaping and the trees will remain as they are. It will carry down to uh, in front of the museum. We will have a small crosswalk there in front of the drive going up to the park, and then the corner where the kiosk is will be redone. That area will be reworked to widen out uh, pavers. This, this entire area around the kiosk will be pavers, and the curb line will come out to about where what would be practically the point where people aren't driving now. Uh, but those parking spaces right in, along there will and then the parking spaces below it. Below that point at the corner of the Martin Shops, that area has been done. The curb's been replaced, the pavers, and the sidewalk there was remained before. It's in good condition. Excuse me, Doug. Did you say you're doing away with the parking spaces that was parallel with the sidewalk? No. No, no. We're not taking any out there. There's no, no uh, back up here where it crosses at Main Street. Right there. Right there. There aren't any parking spaces. I don't think the parking spaces go down that far. Okay, so it already there, been done away. I thought there was one right there before the uh, horizontal started. There is one. Uh, is there? Okay. Yeah, right there. one right there where your, where okay. your corner is. I, our intention is to try to leave them all as they are. Okay, I didn't see it. So. Okay. Yes, we'll add that one back. <clears throat> At 
this point we will keep one crosswalk across Main Street where the crosswalk is now and that will be a, a stamped asphalt crosswalk as all the other ones have been. And that is a that's all of the work on the west side <coughs> of Main Street. If we go back to the east side, we will proceed the area in front of uh, First Citizens has been done and the driveway there will start just south of the driveway where the handicap space is and we'll put a new sidewalk pavers and curb and gutter all along that area down to sunset <clears throat> you see these are the new, these are new trees that would be put in there uh, there are a couple of small ones right in here uh, that will be changed out for new trees uh, we will leave the wall in front of the or our plan right now is to leave the wall in front of the brown property and pour the sidewalk up to that wall as it had been done before and leave that railing unless something different happens on that property before we get to that point. <coughs> uh, the, what we will try to do on this handicapped spot is to lower the curb in that area where you won't have a curb beside the handicapped spot so it will be accessible across in front of it. I think the drainage will work for that. If we can make the driveway work, we should be able to <coughs> do that in that area and keep that as a, a handicapped spot that's really built the way a handicapped spot parallel is supposed to work. As we get down to sunset, we'll have pavers on both corners. And at this point, we're going to stop at basically even with the front of the buildings on, that <coughs> on Main Street and not extend down sunset. That work will be done when sunset's done. And, but we will go ahead and do the crosswalk there. At this point, our plan all along over the past seven, eight years we've been looking at this project is to try to get DOT to pay for new signals at the intersection instead of that being part of the town cost. And that money hasn't been included in our budget. Now they're telling us they don't have any money right now for signals. So what we're going to do is we're proceeding with the point that we're at with the signals as they are. Sunset, we will continue with uh, curb and gutter, paver, sidewalk, and, and all this section of sidewalk will be new. Uh, where the sidewalks wide in front of these few in front of this building with the stores, we'll put a tree sort of centered on that area. As we go down towards Kilwins, uh, there will be a new tree near Kilwins, and then we will continue uh, sidewalk pavers, curb and gutter till we get to Sunset Tees. The sidewalk in that area is in good shape <coughs> and it's under that, that front cover canopy. It's not an awning, so I won't call it an awning, but that front cover. We'll leave the sidewalk in that area um, because it is in good shape and just do the pavers and the curb and gutter. As we get down to uh, the outdoor dining at Six Pence, there's a spot where the sidewalk changes. We'll continue and replace that section uh, all the way down past the alley till we get to the crosswalk at Laurel Lane. There's another section that, that is in good shape in front of several businesses that we will leave and only do pavers and curb and gutter in that area uh, and then tying all the way back down into the fig leaf. Uh, we're also adding trees. We've added trees where we could. There's just not a lot of not a lot of good spots to add trees in that section of the project. That's a really quick view of, of what's happening. Uh, we have walked the project a couple times and we walked it with staff to kind of see what areas we wanted to keep the sidewalk where we, where we didn't uh, to get any of the areas that were damaged or any issues. Uh, so we feel like the places where we've saved sidewalks, sidewalks in really good shape. So we won't have any issues. As we go through, our timing with this is to have the uh, construction drawings ready in, within a few weeks. Those will go to DOT so that probably right about Christmas time we would be ready to go out to bids, to have bids in January to fall in line with the bond funding, uh, to try to have the bids before the dollar amounts, the final dollar amounts for the bonds go forward. 
the same time related to this, we're working on the uh, utility conversions. So we should have that effort will be done before, well before this goes to construction, but hopefully before we actually go out and bid. So we can see if there's areas along this section of streetscape where we need to do conduits or, or other things to prepare for that in the future as we've done in, in previous phases. Greg, are you going to bid it all out of this one project? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I, this project, the total budget for the, for the remaining work um, is 665000 So construction amount will probably be somewhere between five hundred and five seventy five, something like that. That's an easily doable project uh, scale-wise. It's larger than the other ones that we've done uh, in town in the part earlier phases. And then looking to do that construction during next summer construction time schedule. On the signals that you were talking about back at uh, <coughs> Sunset and Main, mm -hmm. uh, were you talking about just the lights or you know, we've been approached, or I have, about uh, walk, don't walk signals on the corners there to try and keep people from having such a problem with everybody walking both ways at the same time and it's stopping traffic completely for so long about uh, having those installed or looking into having those or the price of them. Uh, were, you, which, were you talking about those or were you just talking about the light signals? If Well, I was talking about the whole thing. If we went with a new traffic signal, I think it would make sense to have pedestrian signals on there too because uh, it would probably work out to have what we'd expected before is to have a pole there on this side at the park, a pole on both corners of Sunset, and that's where you would need them to have crosswalks. So right. if we put mast arm poles, they would be laid out as you would need them for uh, pedestrian signals, and it would all tie together. So it would be pretty easy. Well, I say pretty easy. Easy may not be cheap, but it'd be easy to do it if you were doing new signals and including the pedestrians <coughs> because you're putting all that stuff in together. So we'll have to, we can investigate putting uh, pedestrian signals in there, add them to what's there now if, if that's the way everybody wants to go. Are you thinking about uh, at that intersection? I've seen what. Construction. In other words, build it now for future, so the world won't have to be torn up. The uh, the poles themselves would probably wouldn't disturb a lot. They would probably go in the areas where those pavers are. So if we went back, particularly on the sunset side, if we went back later, there wouldn't be a lot of disruption. Uh, if on the other side, they either go in the paver strip or back behind the wall, and you'd probably try to. Keep paper strip just because there's there's not much room there. So I don't think there'd be a lot of disruption. We're not taking out the asphalt in those areas anyway because the asphalt's new. We're essentially, everything will stay as the first couple of phases have. We'll cut the edge of the asphalt where the, where the gutter starts and we'll pour to it. So we won't be disrupting any of the asphalt that's, that was put down other than questions for Deborah? Yeah, just one. The, from the appearance aspect of using the, keeping with the existing sidewalks and then going with the pavers, was there a reason originally when they were looking at this that they decided to go with the plain old sidewalk and then with the pavers and things to stick with it? I mean, because it seems to be some with the old, some with the new. Was there a reason that they didn't want to go completely with the, the new? Well, one of the thoughts, there, there's two, there were two advantages early on, uh, and most of that was done on this side of Main Street, on the west side, is it saves money to keep the sidewalks that are in. It eases construction because uh, a lot of those sidewalks were connected to old rock walls. Uh, they're not on, not on buildings like the other side are, but uh, down in front of Martin House, a lot of that has walls, and, and as you get down to Town Tavern, Approaching the uh, rumble, so that was those were the two primary reasons. Plus, those sidewalks were in good shape. Is that the same thing that you're dealing with on the other side, though? Because I was noticing that you're using the same uh, thinking on the other side. The 
but there's some places that you're seeing the sidewalks are okay, but right across from that you're using the pavers. Is that your same reasoning? Yeah, we would. Well, we're trying to use the pavers to keep a consistent look all the way through. So all all the sections will have pavers, uh, but yeah, trying to save a little bit of concrete, particularly in front of Sunset Tees, because that's going to be a tough place to work okay. uh, with all that they've got there. And that's really uh, we've got uh, a spot in front of Mellow Mushroom, which we're going to leave that area as is. It does look good. It's not wide enough to put pavers in a sidewalk. that we've done lately have been a little high. Um, it's running probably somewhere around five or six dollars a square foot, which seems high. Uh, and it depends on the circumstance. In areas where, if you take the area across from Town Hall in front of the Brown property, there's nobody out there to, disru to disrupt. You go down uh, where you're down at six pence, the kill ones, where we're trying to work around business hours and other things and pouring sections at a time so they can still get in and out of the building. Those, you know, the scale of that, it's hard to put a finger on that, but it takes a lot more time and effort. What I was thinking about was right in front of the park. sidewalk that was one of those areas we had we had a couple of areas where every time we got to the middle of the summer there was dirt there and it was about that deep off the sidewalk because everybody wore the grass off uh, I, I didn't remember how bad it was until I looked up some photos from before we did anything back in 2007 it, it really looked bad so that was an area we said okay let's stick the papers in there and clean that up and it looks a lot better but if we're going to do the sidewalks, if we're going to do that section of sidewalk, now's the time to do it. I'd like to see. I'd like to see how much more it's going to cost to replace that. Is we're trying really hard to make that our focal point and fix it really nice and just fix everything really nice all around it. And then you got old sidewalk coming out in front of it. Okay. Well, we're doing we're doing construction plans all the way through. So if we wanted to take that and bid that to or do as an alternate or something, it'd be easy to do that. I mean, it's not any extra effort to see what that cost, what the actual cost of that would be. Because if I'm guessing, and I am guessing looking at that, that's probably 200 feet across the front part. So if it's 200 feet, five feet wide, that's 1,000 square feet. So it's not, you know, you got demo cost and then four back cost. Yeah, I'd sort of like to see it for the cost for each one of those sections, just to if we can make it uniform. It'd be interesting to see what they cost. If you do that for each one. Salt resistant trees. <laughs> <laughs> Salt resistant concrete. <laughs> that might be a plastic tree. I'm not sure anybody here to even one of those. <laughs> Other questions today? Um, one of the things we had talked about when walking that corridor was possibly adding in the scope of the crosswalk at Laurel Lane. It's gotten a little beaten up over time. Um, if would it be possible to would y'all be okay with getting a cost estimate on that piece as well? Sure. Um, it's it's one that just it, it gathers. It's got a couple potholes in it now, and with doing right across the street, it'll just make that section look that much worse, so it, at least determining what that is. It's also gotten dangerous. Was there yeah. any reason, do we know why why that particular one section 
ended up being so much worse than all the rest of them, or it was just luck of the draw? Yeah, it, that area does get a lot of trap air, um, it, you know, with trucks <coughs> pulling in to park and temporarily unloading in that area. That could be a factor. There's a lot of water runs across that area that doesn't run in the other areas. Mm -hmm. So, it, I mean, if trap gets started, the water gets in. Because the water runs down, uh, the water from wherever the, the peak of the hill is out here in front of the park runs down in front of the park, uh, out by the kiosk, and down uh, in front of Martin House, cuts through by the uh, curb extension, and then flows across Laurel Lane before it runs down that side of Laurel Lane. So there's no pipe in that area. I mean, it, it, the water works fine, but it does cut across that sidewalk. So I mean, that crosswalk, so that may have an impact on it. Is there a way to fix that? sense to go ahead and fix it now since we're tearing everything up. Well, this area we're not tearing up, just the, where we're putting the new sidewalk on Laurel Lane. We're not doing anything on Main Street at that point. Yeah, but you could fix the drainage problems that's, that's messing with the Laurel Lane yeah. crosswalk. And I was in uh, Winston and saw a signal light that looked really nice versus the big ones that Boone's put in that we had talked about putting those big ones, but I'll have to show you, it, it looks really sharp. It's just very, it would work at sunset. Anything else, Doug? Thank you, Doug. <coughs> Do we have any speakers from the floor? Charlie, the floor is yours. Mayor, Town Council, it's good to see you on this chilly evening. Ladies and gentlemen, I just had a couple of questions. One, what was the cost for this project? Okay. And you're with McGill? Okay. Uh, as a citizen, I just wonder why we're not uh, emphasizing on other engineers other than McGill. That'd be something I think that the town needs to look at in the future. Secondly, I grew up here, as we all know. I guess I made that point known. <laughs> when I was here, we had laid stone in the walkways. Why can't we do laid stone instead of pavers? Pavers are, uh, our town's unique. Our town's very unique. Why can't we use laid stone in concrete? Just a thought. I don't know. I don't know what the cost would be. I know I've done some in some businesses, but uh, it might be cost prohibitive. But that would tend to blend better. I know I was walking down the street the other day. I'm thinking, late, it didn't look right. The little laid stone, little bricks, whatever they are. So it's just a thought. And I think uh, that pretty well covers it. Congratulations. Thank you. And congratulations to all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? For the good of the cause. We're adjourned. Have a good evening. We're going to eat. I want you to see this. It yeah. is so cool. I don't see it. It is. I don't get to see it. I know. I was flashing it at you. Look at that. Does that not look great?